Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news and transfer news as Manchester United receive a boost in relation to um, uh, Joshua Kimmich. Also, Marcus Rashford facing a fight to go to the Euros, which I think is great news for Manchester United. Not in a bad way, I just think this is... I think if Marcus Rashford is a doubt to go to the Euros, this is brilliant for Man United. I'll explain that why in a moment. Uh, also, a bit of an update coming in on from Tadebo from Fabrizio Romano. Manchester United have been scouting a Real Madrid striker. We'll be talking about that as well. What else have we got for you? We'll talk a little bit about Kobe Mainu, uh, Ivan Tony as well. Right backs, lot to get into. Hope everybody is doing well this morning. Uh, get your comments in as always. Uh, excited as well because it's Thursday. It's Good Friday tomorrow, which means it's a bank holiday in the UK. We get four days off. Um, but also the return of the Mac. Once again, the return of the Mac. Return of the football. Refer hopefully return of the Martinez. Return of the Martinez. Yeah, definitely return of the football. Preview, two o'clock. If Where have you been? I thought I thought he was dead. Where have you been? I thought he was dead. Previews back at two o'clock. Uh, we've got a preview coming out for the Brentford game. Really enjoyed doing it. And actually, there's some real niche things about the Brentford game. Uh, previews just walked in. I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. Where are you? Uh, anyway, that's that's for that. Let's get into the news. Uh, obviously, get your comments in. Uh, would love Kimmich at United, but can't see it happening, says Solid Blake, member for 14 months. Get your badge in. Thank you very much. Uh, Shane Smith says there's better options than Josalou. He's ruined it. He's ruined it. Shane's ruined it. Uh, no, it's fine, Shane. Don't worry about it. I mean, you don't have a member's badge either, so I have given you a shout out, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll let it go. Um, but look, let's get into this. So, Kimmich, Manchester United transfer boost. What is this all about? So, let me give you the background. Joshua Kimmich is a very good footballer. He can play right back. Predominantly, you want him to play as a midfielder. He turned 29 last month. He's got one year left on his contract at Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich will take about 50 million quid for him. So, there is the prospective deal. Joshua Kimmich, very good player. 29, 50 million quid available this summer. Where's he going to go? Why are Man United involved in this? Where's the transfer boost? Well, it was believed that Barcelona would lead the race for Kimmich. However, reports in Barcelona last night say that Barcelona want Kimmich to wait another year, run his contract down and come. Now, Barcelona, as we saw when they were pulling the levers, they can get players to do all sorts of stuff. Remember that summer where I mean, it was weird. Like, they, they had players waiting to sign for them when they could be going to others. Rafina did it. Lewandowski did it. Powerful Barcelona. Have they still got the power to do that? Because they're trying to do it again. They're trying to say to Kimmich, we can't afford you at the moment. Please wait another year at Bayern and then come to us for free. It's not expected that he'll do that. It's not. Because he knows that by waiting a year, he's still on his current deal with Bayern Munich. And if he goes this summer, he can get better wages. He can make a move. So... There is a feeling that Barcelona are out of the race because they can't afford him. Um, that leaves a door open for somebody to step into. Manchester United potentially could do it. We need a holding midfielder. A holding midfielder of the quality of Kimmich would be absolutely fantastic. I suppose the question mark is, could you accommodate Kimmich and Casemiro? To which the answer has to be, well, we need to accommodate somebody. We need, we need to, you know, we can't be a team who has one holding midfielder. So... Obviously, we can accommodate two holding midfielders. There is a Manchester involved in this as well. Um, and it would be remiss of me not to mention that Man City are considered very hot favourites to get hold of Kimmich. But Manchester United haven't staked their claim for anybody at the moment. And there is an opportunity there. Kimmich is a player that we've scouted. Kimmich is a player we admire. And Kimmich is a player that is available this summer. Bayern Munich want to keep him. But he only has one year left on his contract. It is expected that he will leave this summer. And I think that, look, honestly, 29 years of age for a holding midfielder, some people would sneer at that. I'm just like, are we really just going to discount anybody over the age of 27 now? Like, Palinia, I think he's 28. I'd take him in a heartbeat. Kimmich is only just 29. You'd probably get three or four years out of him. 
I think that if United are serious, and hopefully we are, then we've got to be considering doing a deal like this for 50 million quid for Kimmich. I mean, and if, if we don't do it, Man City will do it. And then they've got Rodri, Kimmich, Bernardo Silva, everybody else. I mean, we're meant to be trying to catch teams, not fall further behind. So I don't think we're in a position where we can go... You know what? We don't want Kimmich for 50 million. We're going to get uh, we're going to get Gomez from Wolves for 40 million because he's a bit younger. That's you, you can't be like that. You can't be like that. And I think that look, I think United need to be looking at this deal. I really do. Um, whether we are more attractive than a Man City is another is another battle to be had. But I mean, part of me, if I'm being really harsh, part of me says. Sal Casemiro for 30 million quid to Saudi Arabia, use his wage on Kimmich, spend 20 million to get Kimmich and then get another midfielder as well. I mean, that to me is an upgrade. That to me is the logical thing to do. Um, but look, I don't know where it's going to go, but he is definitely available this summer. Barcelona have stepped out of the race. There's talk around Madrid. I don't really think Real Madrid will go for Kimmich. I think if Kimmich, I think Kimmich at the moment is going to stay at Bayern Munich or is going to go to Man City. And I think Manchester United need to be looking at that deal and going, that's the sort of player that will revolutionise Man United. And what I do know, what I do know for a fact, and I think we all know this, is that Eric Ten Hag um, would be all over this deal all over this deal. Obviously, he's a massive fan of Bayern Munich. He spent a lot of time there. And I think that Kimmich would be absolutely the sort of player that um, that, that Ten Hag would look at. Uh, Max says Casemiro can't go. Look, I love Casemiro, but I do think that if you can get creative, Casemiro's 31, Kimmich is 29. Kimmich would probably be on less wages. You probably get a lot of that Kimmich fee from selling Casemiro to Saudi. I think it might just be a, a logical step to do it. But look, I, we'll have to see how it develops. But there's definitely there's definitely an opportunity there. Um, Kiri, uh, Charlie Max says Kimmich is brilliant, but is this not a case of a player coming in for their last contract? Well, look, I, I have to acknowledge that. But we've had we've had success with people. We've had failures, Schweinsteiger, of course. But we have had success with people like Cavani to a certain extent, Ronaldo to a certain extent, Zlatan to a certain extent, and they were well into their 30s. Robin van Persie was 29. Alexis Sanchez was 29. So we've had success and we've had failure. I'm not saying, look, what I'm saying, Charlie, is Barcelona want him. Man City are looking at him. Real Madrid are looking at him. It's not like what we did with Schweinsteiger where we were the only ones who went and did it. I think that if we don't go for him, he will end up at a top, top club playing really, really well. I think it's a bit different different with uh, him. Uh, Rory C says, I fear it'll be Rabio and a free. We'll be our de de defensive midfielder signing. A few interesting players expiring next summer. Taram, Davies, David, uh, Tar, Gallagher, Tony. Thank you very much, Rory C. Casemiro or Kimmich, who do you rate more overall? Well, I think I think that's a poll in itself, Partif, uh, in itself. Um, I think it's an either or. Uh, let's go Casemiro or Kimmich, get your votes in. Just go for it. Simon Heron says, Massive respect, Mark, for this amazing channel and your dedication. Been watching from the start and just wanted to say, stay strong, you're a legend. Thank you very much, Simon. Appreciate all the lovely messages from last night, by the way. Um, Florian says, Kimmich has the quality, personality and mentality we need. He's struggling right now. I believe he needs a change to get back to his old form. Uh, Franklin, welcome to the Members Club. You're an absolute legend. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, also, I did mean to add that in. Kimmich isn't having a great season at the moment. So there is that um, opportunity for a fresh start, of course. Josh Edwards, uh, member for two months. Hi, doing Josh. Thank you very much. Just hope you're doing well, mate. Thank you for building such an incredible community. We all have your back. Keep your head up. Thank you very much, Josh. Hope you're doing very well. And Lewis says, favourite striker post Fergie, mine's Ibra. Um... Yeah, well, post Sir Alex Ferguson, I was going to say Van Persie was here post, but uh, it wasn't really the one we bought. Um, yeah, you're probably right on that. Anana in the sixth position is the decision, I reckon, says Isaac in the sky. Yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money, though. 
I mean, we can't discount Anana from Everton. Of course, we can't. And I think Rabiot is a very interesting one. Look, let's see how it uh, let's see how it pans out. Uh, certainly interesting. Um, look, let me bring this story in about a striker as well. This morning, there's quite a few to get uh, stories to get into. So reports in Spain are saying that Manchester United are um, scouting uh, Real Madrid striker Joselu. Now, I don't know about this. I really don't know about this. He's he's 34. Now, I know he's well rated. Uh, a lot of people do like him. Um, and, you know, I have to take that on board. And obviously, I've just said we bought Zlatan at that age. He's had a long and illustrious career. Um, he, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just looking at, he, he played for Stoke for two years in, in 2015. Uh, he was at Newcastle for two years in 2017. Um, Alaves, Espanyol, uh, and uh, obviously Real Madrid. Um, I just, I just don't, I don't. I get. Look, Ivan Tony's one thing. Um, I, I'm so I'm gonna I'm gonna be blunt. JS, one of our members, says absolutely not. It's a no from me. It's a no from me. I mean, this is not the level of striker that should be coming in. Look, I don't want Ivan Tony because I think that's too high uh, in relation to who he will want to start. But I don't want someone like Joselu who is just literally uh, a bench option. Like, you want somebody that's in between. You want somebody that has a pedigree, can challenge Rasmus, but is not wanting to be the main man from the start. Um so I'd be very surprised if Man United were looking at doing this. It's it's almost like taking Real Madrid's garbage. And I'm not saying that Joselu is garbage, but we've got to be better than that. We can't be taking a player that Real Madrid wants to offload so that they can raise a bit of money to get in Mbappe and cover the costs on that. We need to be more imaginative than that. We need to be more creative than that. We need to be more ambitious than that. And I don't think uh, Joselu at 34 is the right way to go. So it's in the news this morning, but yeah, I don't intend to spend a hell of a lot on it. Uh, Josh is a legend. He's just gifted a membership as well. Uh, happy Ramadan, Mark, says Salman. Happy uh, Ramadan to you as well, mate. Hope it's going well, um, of course. And um, there was another thing I wanted to bring in as well. Um, what about McTominay as the striking bench option? I don't think we've ever played him up front in his life, mate. I know he, I know he can potentially do that, but no, not for me. Uh, we need to bring somebody in who can play up front who's a bit quicker than that, I think. Uh, Fabrizio has been talking about Tadebo this morning, and this is what he's had to say. Tadebo is valued around £40 million for the summer transfer window. He is on Manchester United's list since last summer, but more clubs in the Premier League and not only them keep monitoring him. I mean, it's it's a it's a bland update from Fabrizio, but it's a true update from Fabrizio. Manchester United obviously um, have kept Manchester United. Um, sorry, Manchester United have kept Tadebo on their defensive transfer list for a long time. I think he's high priority. I don't agree with the 40 million. Um, maybe I'm in the minority here, but we should not be paying what everyone else is paying for Tadebo. I've seen so many clubs do this over the years. Why the hell are we going to pay market value for a player that we already own? Um, that's what Sir Jim Radcliffe should be saying. Look, Spurs can bid what they like for Tadebo. And if they bid 40, 40 million, that's absolutely fine. But we're giving, he's going to Man United for 34. And if Nice say, why are we giving a 6 million pound discount? Because I own the fucking club. Um, we're not paying market value for Tadebo. They're stupid, absolutely stupid. And if the re and if the regulators start looking at Man United for that, they can do one because we wanted Sesco a couple of years ago, and so did Chelsea, and we were quoted forty million quid, and he went to bloody Leipzig for twenty three. So don't tell me that you can't get a discount from a club that you partially own. So. I don't agree with this market value boll bollocks because other clubs have been doing it for years. So, oh, Man United are not the first club in the world to have an owner that owns another club, by the way. So all those people going, wow, they shouldn't get away with getting a discount. Clubs have been doing it for years. Leipzig and Salzburg have been doing it for years. Like, 
this is what happens. So we should not be paying market value for Sadibo. And I'd be very, very surprised if we do. Uh, as Akil says, 30 million plus five in add-ons will do lovely. Exactly. That's what I that's what I agree. Dalboy says, uh, Tadibo is probably 40 million for other clubs, but 25 for to 30 for Manchester United. And the, look, some people will say, why are you sweating it, Mark? Um, I'm sweating it because every pound counts for United this summer. If we can shave... 10 million off a deal like that, it can help us do another deal. This is where we went wrong in Ten Hag's first summer. We didn't have enough money left to get Gakpo. Like Gakpo to Man United was a deal that we wanted to do, but we overspent on Anthony, we overspent on Casemiro, and there wasn't any money left to go and get Gakpo as well. So if you can shave off money here and there, then you can obviously... Uh, make other deals happen. Jared is a member. Welcome to the Members Club, mate. Thank you very much and good morning to you. Uh, Partit says, if you want Casemiro gone, you must be Rashford Shaw out too. Uh, I don't want Casemiro gone. I don't want Casemiro gone. What I'm saying is there's a lot of doubt over Casemiro from fans this se uh, this season. I'm a big fan of his. Um, the thing that's concerned me about Casemiro is not his performance. It's the, it's the injuries that he's had the last couple of uh, times. Um, can you go into next season knowing that Casemiro is starting to pick up more injuries. That's the thing that worries me about him. Uh, Jozalu shouldn't be anywhere near this squad. We need quality, not quantity, and someone Rasmus can learn off, says Nabi. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, we have got an active poll going on at the moment. 33% uh, of you would go Casemiro. 67% of you would go with Kimmich. So that's uh, really good. I want to talk about this Rashford story and his place in the Euros being in jeopardy and why I think that's a massive boost for Manchester United. But before I talk about that, let me just say, whilst we're talking about the holding midfield position, might be controversial, might even end up being wrong. That's the way it works. But absolutely do not believe that Mainu should be being mentioned as we don't need to buy a holding midfielder. We've got Kobe Mainu. Um, I only see bench options accepting, not starting, says Robert McCormack. Yeah, but there's bench options and there's bench options, Robert. You know, a bench option is a piece of wood on a couple of milk crates. That's a crap bench option. Or you could get what you get down in the parks in London where they've got proper brass handles, you know, they're uh, dedicated to Rose who used to come and sit here in the 1920s and, you know, feed the pigeons. There's bench options and there's bench options, isn't there? And I don't want a crap bench option. So if we're going to get a bench option, I want it to be one of those ones you find in the nice parks in London. You know, really nice bench, well painted, uh, something you want to sit on. Um, and I think Josalu is a bad bench option. Um, anyway, what we're saying about Kobe Mainu, a lot of people say we don't need to buy a holding midfielder because we've got Mainu. I'm absolutely convinced that that is not his position. I I, I don't... I, I know I said a couple of weeks ago, I think he gets overhyped in that position. That's not personal to him. He's our best holding midfielder after Casemiro. But I think when I say he gets overhyped in that position, what I mean is there are certain people in the media and in our fan base who are hyping him up as the next Kante. And I just don't see that. I might be completely wrong, but I just don't see that. I don't. I think he could do the role. But I, I every time I see Mainu, I'm looking at this player that transitions with the ball. Like he gets the ball, he goes past players. He gets the ball, he carries the ball 10, 20 meters. He'd be brilliant at rugby because he makes he makes ground. Like he'd be brilliant at American football because he makes the yards. And there's not many players in the modern game that do that. They've had it trained out of them. You know, look at Jack Grealish. He was a player that made yards. He would At Villa, he would go past players and he'd make things happen. And that's why Villa was so good. At Man City, he gets his head up and he has to play a five-yard pass sideways. It's all, you know, it's not very progressive. It's all systematic structure. Kobe Mainu is a, is a, is a gift. He's, he's a player that gets the ball, quick feet, goes past the player. Oh, my God. You know, if you're playing Man City against Man United with Kobe Mainu and they've got their structure in their midfield... And Kobe Mainu just skips past De Bruyne into space. Rodri's got to come to him. Oh, Bruno's free. There you go. Oh, Bruno's got space. Someone's got to go to him. This is a game changer in the modern game. I've been talking about this on That's Football for years. I'm bored of tiki-taka, playing through the lines, people not taking each other on. I think there's an evolution of football coming where we see more Zidane's, more Gascoigne's, 
Pogba used to be able to do it. Players that are not just getting the ball and going, oh, there's a through pass, let's move. Players who are going, come on then, quick feet and past you. Right, your structure's gone. Space, space, space. Kobe Mainu can be the antidote to that. Kobe Mainu can be the, the medicine. Um, you drop him in holding midfield, he's not going to be able to do it as often. You put him as the number eight, he's going to be able to do that five, six times a game. That's going to be revolutionary for people like Rashford and Bruno and Rasmus because space is going to come as people have to come towards him. I think the future with Mainu has to be as the number eight. So we do need to bring in a number six, 100%. Um, Jaws Solution, anyway, we read that. Uh, I just wanted to get that off my chest because I think, as I said, there's a lot of people thinking that Kobe Mainu is going to be our holding midfielder. And I think we've got a really unique midfielder here that can transform, you know, I don't want Man United to be like Man City. I don't want Man United to be like Liverpool. I want us to play a high line. I want us to attack more. But I want us to invent our own style of football. And if you've got a midfielder like Mainu who can skip past people for fun, low centre of gravity, quick feet, magnetic, who else has got a midfielder like that at the moment? Who else has got a midfielder in the top six who can do what Mainu does? Declan Rice is very good. Rodri's very good. De Bruyne is very good. Phil, Phil, Phil Foden's very good. But... The feat that he's got to skip past people is incredible. I don't want to tame that. I don't want to tame that. Uh, how do you deal with the grief of someone passing, says Halo? On a morning show? Bloody hell. Um, God. Um, you, you don't. You don't. Um, you don't. Um, if you... if you, The whole point of grief is... It reflects how much you love something. So if you really love something and they go you're going to feel the pain of them going. That's the whole point. You don't grieve something you don't care about. You know, in a footballing sense, when Ronaldo left to go to Real Madrid, that took a long time to get over because we all loved him and he went to Real Madrid. Um, you know, when, when you sell somebody like... When Phil Jones retires, no one really cares from a footballing sense. So um, grief is a natural process of love at the end of the day. You, you've just got to work through it and appreciate what it is. It's the, it's the, it's the sadness of something that you love passing. Um, limiting, but it, but you will get used to it. Uh, limiting Mainu to a holding midfield position would be criminal, says Spot On, and we should have players competing for positions, says John. Simon G Kelly, welcome to Members Club. Thanks for your support, mate. Get your badge in. And what do you think of Rasmus getting the number nine shirt and then possibly being unveiled as R nine during the US tour, says Alex. I mean, I think those things are. I think those things are important, um, but to me, I'm not really that bothered. It's about what they're doing on the pitch. Uh, Z3 Music Official says, Glad to see Fabrizio clear up the Southgate rumours saying Ineos backs Ten Hag. Uh, has he, when, when has he said that? Um, let me have a quick look if that's a new thing. Um, I, I, I see that he's just mentioned that Bremer has uh, a release clause in 2025. But yeah, his, his release clause is around 60 million quid. Um, which is interesting. Um, oh, right. Okay. Southgate has not held talks with United. Ten Hag's next two months will be important to understand his future. But talks with Ineos were very positive. There we go. Uh, which, which is what we sort of know. Uh, one other bit of breaking news we've got for you this morning uh, is around the... Um, Isaac says, what clubs do you think will take Mason? I think Atletico Madrid are favourites at the moment from what I'm hearing. Um, and that's put, that's out in the public uh, domain anyway. Um, Marcus Rashford. Uh, an article in The Telegraph came out this morning saying that Marcus Rashford's place in the Euros is in danger. Um you want, you might, yeah, well, to be honest with you, it should be. It, it, you know what? From a, from an England point of view, it should be in danger. Um, from a Man United fan point of view, it should be in danger. He's had a really bad season. And I can't sit here saying, why does Southgate pick Henderson and Calvin Phillips when they're crap? And then say, Rashford needs to go to the Euros. There, there's a very strong uh, um, pint of hypocrite there, isn't there? Because Rashford's not been very good this season. And honestly, Gordon... Palmer are better than him this season and, and probably deserve to go to the Euros. So look, I, I, 
on, on the very basic level, do you think Rashford deserves to go to the Euros? I don't think he probably does deserve to go to the Euros, to be honest with you. So his place legitimately should be in danger. Um, I don't have a problem with that story. And I suspect that, you know, it's, it's well researched on the fact that I think that it probably will be Anthony Gordon or Marcus Rashford who go to the Euros. And honestly, Gordon deserves to go over Rashford. Um, I don't think he will. I think Rashford goes to the Euros because Gareth Southgate's in charge and Gareth Southgate would buckle under the pressure that there will be to take Marcus Rashford to the Euros for many reasons. Um, Marcus Rashford is a very, very big name and, you know, it shouldn't probably be the case in football, but England has never been run on elite form and performance. England has for a long time been run around what's popular and Marcus Rashford is a very popular player. I am absolutely convinced he will go to the Euros no matter what. Um, so I don't believe the story. I don't believe that his place is in any jeopardy at all. Gareth Southgate picks favourites and I think Rashford's one of his favourites. So I think Rashford will 100% go. I also think Rashford offers, offers you something that Gordon doesn't in the sense that he can play up front. So if you don't want to take Watkins, Tony and Kane, you could take Rashford and he can play as the third striker as well. So I think Rashford will go. Whether he deserves to go or not, I think he will go. But there is a positive for United here. There is a positive for us here. Because I put United up here and I put England down here. I will I will watch the Euros and I will enjoy the Euros because it's better than watching Wimbledon. But Man United comes first. And Rashford's place in the Euros being under jeopardy is a good thing because... If he knows that and he thinks that, then surely that benefits us. Because if I'm Marcus Rashford today, I'm like, I've just been on international duty. I barely played. People have said I had an injury. Southgate said it wasn't because of injury I didn't pick him. I wanted to have a look at other players. So Rashford really should be back at work today with Man United thinking, well, that didn't go well. That international break did not go well for me at all. I hardly played any minutes. Other new players got more minutes than me. My place, I think I'm all right, but my place might be in jeopardy. So why is that a good thing for Manchester United? Because hopefully he will start to think, shit, I might be I might be off in June. I might not be part of this England Euros winning team or or even the Euros. Like, I think we'll win it, but, you know, whatever. Um, which is a massive blow for somebody who is, what, 26? How many more tournaments has he got? So Rashford will want to be part of that England team. He will want to be part of that squad. Now, I don't think he's going to get anywhere near the first team, but the first step is to be part of the squad. To not be in England's top 25 players is a massive kick in the nuts for Marcus Rashford after a really disappointing season. So why is this a good thing for United? Because I think it's a good thing for quite a few of our players. There's a lot of our players that want to go and play in the Copa America. There's a lot of our players that want to go and play in the Euros. And um, there's a lot of our players that are maybe playing for moves in the summer or, 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 or whatever. If Rashford thinks his Euros place is under jeopardy, then surely that translates to better performances for Manchester United over the next two months. If Rashford wants to go to the Euros, go and score six or seven goals in the last ten games. We, 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 we benefit. So I don't really care about whether Rashford's place is in jeopardy or not. I don't believe it is. But let's pretend it is. I think it is. I actually do think he will not go to the Euros at the moment. And I think the only way that Rashford will go to the Euros is if he starts scoring a lot of goals in the next few games and playing really well creatively. If he starts getting a few assists and a few goals, he'll definitely go to the Euros. And that's, that's my take on it. I'm sort of like... This could be a spark for Rashford with a point to prove. And we would benefit from that. And hopefully that's what will happen. And hopefully that's going to happen with a lot of players as well. Uh, Trishan says, I'd rather watch Emma Raducanu at Wembley than England. And uh, Rob Goodwin, welcome to the Members Club. Thank you very much. Jared says, what's your thoughts on Gio Keres? Uh, I probably pronounced it badly. The Swedish striker at Sporting Lisbon. Stellar season from him. I don't know what his price point is, mate. Um, the problem with, with him is that I think he looks like a very, very good striker. 
but he might fall into the Ivan Tony category of being a striker that's just too good to come to United in the sense that he would want to be a starter week in, week out. And uh, as, as Robert McCormack said, we, we, we do need an option that's going to be happy to come in as a bench option to start off with. Uh, they'll play a lot of games. You know, the bench option's not going to... I think the striker thing is really interesting because the bench option's not going to just sit there on the bench all season. Um, most games in the Premier League at the moment are about 115 minutes long. If you come on in the 70th minute, you're playing for at least half an hour. So you're getting half an hour a game. There'll be rotation. There'll be injury. So I don't think we need to see it as exclusively as a bench option. You will play a lot of football. Uh, but I think that someone like that might be too uh, for, too too, dif too difficult for Manchester United to do. Christian says, thanks for all the com content. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate that. Um, I don't know whether you watched the show last night. Thank you, everybody, who did. But if you did miss it, Ivan Tony is not a target for Manchester United. This came in on last night's show uh, from yesterday afternoon. Uh, very, very good source. We were talking about Greenwood and then obviously got onto the conversation about strikers. Ivan Tony is not on Manchester United's list at the moment. He is considered the wrong type of striker for United. Nothing to do with potential red flags around personality or anything like that. Completely to do with the price tag and the expectation that striker would have. You're going to pay 70 million plus for Tony. And he's going to want to start every game. And that's not what United are looking for. So the Ivan Tony rumours are basically coming from the fact that United want a striker and haven't really decided yet. So, of course, Tony could be a consideration. But what I got told yesterday from a very good source is that Ivan Tony will not be signing for Manchester United this summer because he's just not the striker that we're looking for. We don't want a 70 plus million striker. So I suppose it'd be the same with that Sporting Lisbon player. Um of course, that could change. I mean, we're playing them on Saturday. But that could change if the manager changes. You know, new manager could come in and say, I don't fancy Rasmus, I want Tony. But um, as things stand, no. Um, Radrish says, good, stay away from Tony. Good player, bad price and personality. Um, what do you think about Jonathan David as Michael Higgins? Well, I think Jonathan David, maybe not him, but what he represents is probably more likely. One year left on his contract... 24, hard-working forward, going to cost you less than 40 million quid. And I think he would come in as a bench option. My only problem with Jonathan David is is, is five foot nine, a little bit small to lead the line for Manchester United. I don't know. Can Fulham uh, call Fulham and get Palina and Muniz, 70 million job done. Then we can come back and focus on the back lines as Charlie Max. Mate, there's no way they're going to let Muniz and Polinio go for 70 million. They'll want 70 million for Polinio alone. Um, not saying that they wouldn't be good options, though. In many ways, I think if you could take those two, you'd be laughing. But uh, yeah. Jared says we should be looking towards Sesco. Uh, Prajwell, hi, Mark. What do you think about Martinez as a CDM? I, I, I think it could work, but we've never tried it. And, and I think Ten Hag has spoken negatively about it anyway um there's been more than enough chances last season to do it and he never did it so i don't think he sees martinez as a holding midfielder i think he sees martinez as the player that's the guy who's going to revolutionize the way we play higher up the pitch and play out from the back um abdul says what's your take about kumich or zubamendi uh, who has a release clause of 60 million in fact he fits in best with the age and quality for united Look, Zubimendi is an interesting player and we've definitely scouted him. Um, Arsenal want him as well. He, he's 25. Um, you know what? I'd be happy with either player. And I, I subscribe to what you're saying. These are the sort of players that we should be looking to bring in. What I would love to do going into next season is be in a position where... We have two holding midfielders and neither of them are Kobe Maney. If we can achieve that by the start of next season, I'll be very, very happy. What I don't want to do is go into next season knowing that Kobe Maney is the backup CDM because I just want him to flourish as a teenager player coming through in his best position and express himself. And I think that the responsibility he's had to take on his shoulders holding the midfield at 18 will stand him in good stead, but... I don't want him to play that role. I want him to play in the number eight position. 
Um, I'm really interested to see how this Alfonso Davis situation works out in Bayern. He would be a fantastic signing. Off to Real Madrid, apparently, Z3. Um, yeah, that's where apparently he's going. And... Gustav is from the same area in Stockholm as the Sporting Lisbon striker. Gems can't wait for Martinez to come back. Well, don't miss the preview at two o'clock because uh, we've got some updates on that for you to come in. Um, Kimmich can play multiple positions. He, he's a coach. Uh, it'd be good for the coach. He's trapped. And Rashford just isn't good enough. When will people understand and accept this, says James? And uh, we need to sell Mason Mount, says Ol Well, now is not the time on a news show to, to dwell or discuss Mason Mount. But there is a conversation about Mason Mount. Like... We've spent a lot of time talking about the midfield and Kobe Mainu and I, I just... Where, where is Mason Mount fitting into this team? Because he has to fit in somewhere. 50, £55 million pounds is a considerable signing. He's still in his mid-20s. Where does Mason Mount fit into this team? You know, are we, are we going to move towards Kobe holding Mount as an 8 and Bruno as a 10? I mean, I, I don't like that midfield three. I don't like that midfield three at all. But at some point, he has got to... Um, He's got to fit into that team, hasn't he? And I, I, I don't want to see Bruno... Um, I, I do not want to see Bruno Fernandes playing on the right wing. I don't want to see that. I don't think anybody wants to see that. Um, what's going on here? Just trying to check something out for you. Somebody was just saying, when's the press conference? I mean, sometimes they do do it on a Thursday. But I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. Let me just double check. Yeah, they've got it down at uh, half past one tomorrow for the press conference. There you go. Anyway, thanks everyone for tuning in. Make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe. Uh, preview at two o'clock for Brentford. There's some amazing little stats I've brought into that for you. So make sure you check that out. Uh, also, we've got the eight o'clock show tonight, press conference tomorrow. So might be heading into bank holidays, but we've got you covered on the United stand. And of course, we've got a match on Saturday as well. Very excited to have the football back. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. Uh, Zen says players who can turn it on when they have a special, uh, when they have a personal point to prove is just a massive red flags in terms of mentality. We cannot have this player type. Yeah, it is. You need consistency. It's a very good point. Uh, and Tom says at the start of it, uh, everyone said De Jong was a number six. It was only after they put him along another side, another number six, that they really started to shine at Ajax. Uh, good point, Tom. Uh, at least we haven't got any De Jong rumours this summer at the moment. And Declan, welcome to the Members Club. You're an absolute legend. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Uh, take care, everyone. I'll speak to you at two o'clock with the preview. Have a good one.